Welcome back to Behind the Scenes as I uh, now deal with part two of putting it together, a behind the scenes look at putting together a stage production from concept all the way through to opening night. So I'd go through the blocking in pieces of the whole show and uh, sometimes you might only get, you know, part of act one blocked the first day. Maybe it's, and if it's, you know, two acts, so maybe it might take you two or three days to stage Act one, just where the people move because you are breaking up the days between acting, singing, dancing. Choreography typically takes the longest. It's the most complicated in terms of learning the steps and, and you know all of that flowing together and being synced up. So you, I always like to give the choreographer a really good shot at getting that uh, happening as early as possible so that the performers, the dancers have as much time as possible to review that and to polish that. A two-week rehearsal period is, is sort of common in a lot of the theater that I do. It's short. You know, if you talk about, you know, bigger shows, they might have months um, or sometimes you'll have two or three, but two two weeks is, is not an uncommon time period. I've done my very first show, Cinderella with Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera. We had a week to put the show together. One week rehearsal, one week run. So you got to move fast. <laughs> so in this case, I try to front load as much as possible so actors know what they're doing and they have as much time as possible then to focus in their spare time, you know, in their practice time of their own to focus on the things they need to do. Meanwhile, they still have to learn all their lines and what we call get off book. So they're able to put that book, that script, down and that'll usually start happening sometime in the second week when you start then getting into the other technical things if the lighting and sound designer wants to come in and, and sit through usually we'll kind of let them know all right we're going to be doing a stagger through <laughs> of, of act one so you might want to come and take a look at that or they might wait until we're doing it's it's quite a while before we start being able to do the whole show um, but I might also have started to have sit down and have conversations with them about the look of it. Is it more blues or reds or is it bright yellows or, you know, what is the feel of the show? Are there a lot of mood changes? And um, because the lighting designer is going to have to start gathering the things they need, um, any gels to color the lights. Uh, do they need any special effects sort of thing? Is there, do we want something that's going to look like it's throwing leaves all across the set? Or is there some sort of projection uh, that says something? Um, uh, like one time we had a show that it was, it was a show within a show. So the name of the show was projected uh, as sort of a, a light stencil. So when it was projected, you saw that on, on the wall or on the screen. So all those types of things start happening also during rehearsals. At some point then, we will get actually into the theater space. And that could be anywhere from a day or two before, you know, or maybe sometimes you've had the space to work in, all, you know, during the day all the time. There might be a different show running at night in that space, but you might be able to use the theater space during the day. Sometimes you don't get in until, you know, a, a couple of days before, the day before. Typically, I find setting lights, unfortunately, often happens late at night because you're rehearsing with the actors during the day and then you need it to be dark in order to set lights because each new light cue starts from black and then they start raising lights to figure out what the picture is and then that gets recorded in the light board. Um, so you constantly, when you're setting those light cues, each time you've, got, you, you've set it for a new scene or a new light change, which can often happen several times within a scene and often, I mean, when you're talking about choreography and dance numbers, those lights change a number of times. It might start sort of slow, so you've got a certain kind of light, and then it kicks into, you know, a more upbeat section of the song, so you're going to brighten the lights, so that's a new light cue. So when those things happen, or you suddenly want to spotlight something in particular, each one of those is a new light cue. So it'll always, first of all, go to black. So if we're, if we are in a position where we can use actors, or even if we're using other crew members who are sort of walking the stage, which often happens when you're setting lights, it's, you've got, 
you know, you've got your assistant lighting person who's being a body on the stage, or, you know, maybe you've got a stage manager, maybe you've got, you've got whoever it is you've got. Rarely do you get to use the actors because they're usually, it's their downtime to be doing their own rehearsal stuff. It'll be like, okay, going black and everybody, you know, waits and then the lights start coming back up and you're like, okay, walk over downstage left and okay, so we need this kind of light there. And so you set all those lights and colors and everything, every cue that's going to happen. And then there will be a point where you're going to do what we call a cue to cue, where the actors are going to be in. And this is one of the most tedious things to do. And as a performer, as an actor, it's not about performing. It's about seeing, seeing to make sure that all of the light cues work. So sometimes the lights aren't as bright or they're too bright. So you make those little adjustments. So you might say, okay, good. Everybody come in to you know, here's the first light cue. Okay, it's going to be, first of all, it's going to be maybe just curtains closed with a glow on the on the curtain and the house lights are on. So that might be your first cue. And then house lights go to half, house, house lights go full out, um, the glow on the curtain drops, so everything goes black, the curtains open, and then you've got whatever your first light cue is. So we'll, we'll get to there and then we'll say, okay, good, uh, first entrances and People will enter and then you'll stop. And now we're going to jump ahead maybe. It's like, okay, this light cue is gonna stay until blah, blah happens. So we might say, okay, good, skip ahead to Joe's entrance. So you go literally through the cues, but you don't run the whole show because you don't need to. If the light's not going to change for another three pages, then you're just gonna skip those three pages. So you literally go from light cue to light cue and sometimes sound cue to sound cue. And if it's a song, it's like you just hear the beginning of the song. It's like, okay, good, we got that, moving on. Uh, so it's just te a technical run through basically, and we call it a cue to cue. The other aspect of cue to cue is sometimes you have to slightly adjust where actors are gonna be because of the lights or actors have to know your spot is gonna be there. So it's like, can you feel that? And we can put what we call glow tape on the stage uh, so any pieces that are going to be moved have little marks so we know where prop or set pieces come into. And actors uh, can have certain marks. There might be an X. It's like, okay, that's that. Hit that spot. Um, that's going to be your cue. That's where the spotlight's going to be on you. But you also have to learn how to feel when you are in the light. And it's kind of, you will feel the warmth and you can tell when you get a little bit into shadow. So those types of things are things that actors begin to recognize. And all of a sudden, if a light doesn't come up and you're standing in the dark for too long, the smart actor will make a move to where the light is as opposed to standing in the dark to sing their solo. So actors need to recognize and learn where those things are going to happen and whether some staging that I set doesn't quite work and it's going to need to shift a little bit upstage, downstage, right, left. So that's the other piece of Q to Q and why the actors need to be there so they understand and make note of anything that might need to change or wait until that light's there and then move into that light or wait until the light goes dark and then exit. We also use glow tape so that when it goes dark, when at the end of a scene, everything goes dark. Uh, if, you've been, if you have been on stage and lights have been on you and they can be kind of blinding. And so when it suddenly goes dark, you can't see anything. So you rely on uh, glow tape to get safely off, or sometimes someone in the wings, a stage manager, or somebody, or you know, a stage crew person in you know, in the bigger theaters where you have more behind the scenes crew might have like a little flashlight sort of on the floor in the in the wings to help guide you so you don't bump into things. But glow tape definitely helps. And sometimes we sort of help each other, or we go to not full black and we have just enough of a glow that the actors don't hurt themselves. There will also, if there is a band or an orchestra, there will be um, a rehearsal with the orchestra. You typically do not have the orchestra throughout all the rehearsals because it's expensive to pay the musicians for all of the rehearsals. So the musicians uh, will come in for an orchestra rehearsal with the singers and that is strictly to sing through the music. So the actors will usually sit on stage um, and it's called a sitzbro and I don't know why, it's probably 
a foreign word that means something and I should have looked that up before I got on here, but there you go. We will have that, uh, that rehearsal with the orchestra and we will sing through. And that is for the conductor and for the musicians, for the orchestra to get to, um, to go through the music and the singers to get to hear the orchestra. Um, it's not a place for the singers to go, well, I kind of want to interpret it this way. No, that's already happened in rehearsals and that's already been um, relayed to the conductor. So it's really just that combining. So the orchestra can hear the singers and see what's going on. The conductor can follow the singer and, the sing and we can put those together. And that typically happens you know, maybe the day before opening, depending on the size of the show. Um, and then you get into having a full on dress rehearsal. Dress rehearsal usually is with the orchestra. Not always. It just depends. Um, <laughs> but typically, yes, a dress rehearsal will be everything. Lights, sound, orchestra, costumes, um, to make sure that everything, everything is, is there and ready and there's no mistakes and you know when you're ready for opening and even if you're not opening is set and you have to figure it out <laughs> but hopefully things go well or at least you can take notes about what needs to be resolved between dress rehearsal and opening and then finally you get to opening night which is always very exciting and maybe you know a degree of nerves it's it's a mix of nerves and excitement you hope that you remember everything you're supposed to do and you don't go blank and that there's no big technical errors and uh, and all of those types of things. Um, you've also had an opportunity to work with microphones in some of those rehearsals if you're wearing body, body mics uh, or whatever it is that you're using and figure out making those, adjusting those things. And so you've had you know, an opportunity for the sound person to to understand sound levels. There's, there's always a sound check before shows with musicals. Actors half hour is considered your call time. If you know you need more than a half hour, then you get there whatever time you need to get there. But uh, the stage manager or someone will come at half hour and go, okay, half hour, and they'll make sure everybody's present that needs to be there. They'll hand out microphones or the microphones might be sitting in your dressing room at your spot with your name on them and you'll put your mic on or you'll carry your mic out onto the stage and we'll do a sound check and a sound check is simply just making sure your mic is on and functioning um, the sound person might ask you to just speak or they might ask you to sing a little bit of a song it you know the longer the show goes the more they kind of know what's happening so it's pretty easy uh, so that takes you know five minutes or whatever and then you go back into your dressing room, you finish getting ready, you will get various different calls. 50, you might get 15, you might get 10, you'll, you always get five. You'll get a call for places. Uh, so anybody who needs to be someplace right at the beginning of the show and the show goes up and you just deal with anything that happens that is, you know, a little different than what you expected. But it's exciting because you, for the first time, have an audience there and get to uh, really perform for an audience and hear their reactions and and all of that. So it is, openings are very exciting. And then usually there's an, you know, an opening night party to celebrate, uh, hopefully what was a, a good opening night. <laughs> and the relief of, hey, we made it, we got there. Um, and then the uh, run of the show uh, continues on from there. You, you know, typically after that, you don't have more rehearsals. It's, it's sort of, sometimes they'll be, Hey, you know, let's come early to make sure there was a problem with tonight's show. Let's make sure that that gets cleaned up. Let's do that. So let's, uh, you know, everybody be here an hour before show, and we're just going to run that one number or something like that. Or people can ask to do things. And then it's up to actors. If there's things that they want to get into the space and walk around before the theater opens to let the audience in, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the wonderful world of theater on, on a few different levels, mostly being involved behind the scenes, like with this smaller level of theater. I've never been worked behind the scenes in a really a bigger theater. And uh, so it just means you have more crew and stuff with the bigger shows. Um, but it's always exciting, no matter the size of the cast, the size of the theater, it's just something magical about, you know, 
putting a show together and getting to perform it in front of people. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of putting together a theater production and I will be back with more questions on various different topics. Thanks for watching.